92.3 FM, WMXD. The salute to the temptations. A special tribute to, to David Ruffin, who tragically passed away earlier today. Like uh, thousands of other Detroiters who were shocked and saddened, many made their way to the Motown Museum where it all started for Mr. David Ruffin. When I went there today, uh, TV camera crews were there. People were just stopping by the Motown Museum right off of uh, Grand Boulevard. As if it were uh, a shrine, which it is very much a shrine, to all of the Motown stars and to all of the things that Motown meant to the world. Uh, these artifacts are embodied there at the Motown Museum. The founder of the Motown Museum, Mrs. Esther Edwards, was there. She was nice enough to talk to me, spent a few hours talking to me about the temptations, about David Ruffin when he first joined the Motown stable and how he got there. And I asked her if she could uh, talk with me later on tonight. And she graciously accepted, and we have her on the line right now. Uh, hello, Mrs. Edwards. Hello, Mojo. All right, how are you today? Well, I'm just fine, considering the uh, sadness that we have for, you know, uh, hearing about the death of David Ruffin. But everything is fine otherwise. Uh, David Ruffin came up to Detroit from Meridian, Mississippi, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, how did he get to Motown? Well, actually, you know, when uh, uh, I, I think I, I was talking with my sister Gwendolyn Gordy Fuqua, and, um, you know, Gwendolyn uh, owned Anna Records, and it seems that a, a friend uh, of David's brought him to Detroit and brought him over to Anna Records, and um, because there was a flat over her company on St. Antoine and Farnsworth, uh, David stayed there, and uh, Gwen signed David to a recording contract, and he had a couple of records on Anna, and then subsequently uh, um, she uh, steered David over to uh, Motown to Barry's uh, company, uh, Motown Records. What kind of guy was David Ruffin? Well, David... Um, in those days, I, I, I knew David. He was uh, quiet-spoken and, you know, just a, a nice person and uh, very talented always. And uh, when he joined The Temptations, uh, he fit the group perfectly. Uh, you know, the guys were handsome and, and uh, very uh, much together and uh, just a kind of a unified uh, group. And uh, David fitted in just fine and the first um, hit recording that uh, the Temptations had um, David Ruffin was a part of that 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 uh, group you know and I think it was about 1963 when David joined the Temps and their first um, major their first hit was the way you do the things you do of course, Eddie Kendricks was leading it, but uh, it was David and Melvin and Otis and um, and Eddie. We were talking earlier about how they got along as a group. Uh, you had mentioned that and they... Paul Williams, I'm sorry. I let Paul out. Mm -hmm. it, it, you were mentioning how they got along as a group, how they uh, always tried to look out for each other and they very much acted uh, like an organization. Yes, that's correct. Yes, they monitored each other's uh, activities and they had their own ground rules and their um, codes, you know, of ethics and uh, they just, um, you know, they, they, uh, they had, uh, they fined each other for being late or different things they they really um was a together group and uh 
they wanted to look good and they wanted to uh, be the best and they worked hard and they practiced hard and they were not overnight successes. Um, it, it took um, about four years. Um, uh, David was not one of the original members, but uh, uh, he joined the group in 63, and of course they had not uh, had any hits uh, up until that that time. And after after the way you do the things you do, um, the Temps never looked back, and they were just a, a group that was an idol uh, to many, many young men across this country and even in foreign countries. They had their style and they had their uh, synchronization and um, they were just great to look at. David was, was a real lead singer. Uh, in fact, several, uh, so many of the temps in the, were, were, could sing the lead. And uh, they, they, were, they were unique, they were different, and they were, they were just um, exciting, wonderful <laughs> uh, group. And they still are today, really. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with Mrs. Esther Edwards, uh, the sister of Barry Gordy, and the founder of the Motown Museum. What would you say, what did David Ruffin uh, bring to the group that uh, wasn't already there? Or maybe it was there, and maybe his presence uh, brought it out even more. Well, I think David, um, on stage, uh, David brought probably some additional excitement and a different kind of excitement, you know. Uh, the tent said, you know, great voices and great harmony, and um, uh, and uh, they they were good dancers. Uh, Paul Williams, uh, I think, was like their choreographer, uh, uh, so to speak. Uh, and they would come up with these steps. And of course, in in the Motown Artist Personal Development Department, Charlie Atkins. Uh, uh, help them to synchronize those steps but they could really dance they could do the temptation walk but david added i think m some more excitement to the dance and uh, did some little extra things uh off stage i knew david uh is kind of quiet spoken and not having a great deal to say um in those early days. He was a member of the Temptations from 1963 to about 1968 when he uh, uh, still stayed at Motown, but it, it, he was, became a solo act. Um, until about um, um, 79, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And that, that's when he went to Atlantic Records. But he rejoined the Temps in 1982 for this reunion LP, which is a, which is a classic LP. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. um, as the founder of the Motown Museum, uh, at, at a moment like this with the loss of uh, such an incredibly talented entertainer, such as David Ruffin, um, I would be remiss not to say that uh, the world is is indebted uh, to you because uh, you have single-handedly taken on the project of, uh, of putting a museum together, uh, enshrining all of the, uh, the artifacts and the things that uh, made uh, Motown Records happen. And... Uh, the, I, I was in there and I saw uh, the original uniform that this group wore on stage. I guess they must have worn it during one of the uh, Motown reviews. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, when you first started putting this together, how did that come about, putting a museum together? Well, I want to say that, that I haven't quite done it single-handedly because uh, there's some wonderful volunteers that... Uh, 
help out in the museum. I couldn't do it otherwise. And uh, and we have a, a few uh, very dedicated staff members. But the idea, the museum just kind of started evolving around me when the Motown headquarters moved out to California and the uh, and they, and we moved from the building downtown on Woodward Avenue, then the Hitsville USA house uh, that had the recording studio had been uh, operable and, and the recording sessions were still going on 24 hours a day from 1959 to 1972. That house, Hitsville USA at 2648 West Grand Boulevard there, little west of Henry Ford Hospital, um, became the Detroit branch office in 1972 when the headquarters moved to Hollywood, California. And I became the, the uh, uh, I was senior vice president of the company, and uh, so I stayed there and to oversee the Detroit uh, operation. And people would just show up on the doorstep. They would come from mostly from the foreign countries. And uh, one day I looked out and it was like the whole British Navy was out there, all these, all these young men in white and with this accent. And they had just docked in Toledo and took a bus to come over to see where it all began. Where did Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, uh, Marvin Guy, they called him. Uh, where they started and they were just amazed and it was just uh, and they treated it like it was a shrine as did so many, so many other visitors mostly foreign visitors and it was at that point I began to realize that hey maybe Motown made history maybe Detroit was um, had you know something else to be very proud of and uh, so as I said, it just started evolving, and that gave me the idea, well, maybe we should uh, display some of the uh, artifacts and some of the gold records and some of the wards and some of the photos so that if these people are going to uh, hop the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean to come to Detroit just to see us, as many of them said, then maybe we should have something for them to, to look at. And so that's how the museum started evolving. And uh, because we were not a corporate project, we formed the Motown Museum Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, to try to make this museum happen so that we could um, uh, preserve the, the uh, history, this era in American music history that had such a global impact and it started right here in Detroit uh, by just a, uh, a young black man who really didn't set out to build a Motown, but Barry Gordy just did not wish to work on the production line in the factory um, as, as a career and uh, he didn't like the routine job and so he just quit that job and it was a good $85 a week job in the, in those days and um, he just quit it to uh, said he was going to be a songwriter and had no intentions of um, of uh, he had uh, well he had almost given up his dream of um, you know uh, being um, you know being making a million dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> but he always uh, when mm -hmm. he was young he always said he wanted right. to be uh, a, pro a, a boxer because he'd hear about these million dollar gates and things like that you see so uh, he just thought he'd be a songwriter and and he didn't know that that was a great deal of money or anything like that and uh, one thing led to another and that's the way Motown got started and it seems that the museum is kind of parallel to that. It just started evolving and now the ball has begun to roll and we have great plans because we really would like to preserve this history because we wanted to uh, inspire and motivate and educate 
especially young people to know that you know you what can happen if you uh, just pursue your dream and with uh, a unity and togetherness and love and support for each other and keeping the plan mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, you know that's the way it got started. what's happening at the museum and we certainly appreciate every every bit of help that we can get and uh, as I said not I can't do it single-handedly and I haven't uh, but with the help of the, the the people of Detroit I'm sure that we can build a world-class museum that uh, we will all be proud of well, what are the hours of operation uh, Monday through Friday um, from 9 until from 10 until 5 Monday through Friday and on Sundays from 2 to 5 and of course we're closed on holidays right and um, uh, there's a three dollar admission two dollars for children under 12 and uh, we have a souvenir shop, and uh, that is what supports the museum at this point it, it would be great to see uh it would be great to see uh, all of the dreams and hopes that you have for the museum uh you know, come to pass because I think that um, you know events like this uh, you know though tragic very tragic yeah it's it, very sad and very we're very sorry because David was a young man and so talented you know such a, a one of a kind entertainer with his own style and uh, just so unfortunate uh, you know that the um, the the um, the the um, problems of today, uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the drugs and so forth. It's it's just too bad. It's just really saddening that uh, young people have to be exposed to to that kind of a uh, possibility. Well, the. With the museum, uh, at least uh, all of the David Ruffin fans uh, tomorrow, Temptations fans, they can uh, walk in the footsteps of giants because of your efforts to preserve, uh, you know, this great facility. Um, earlier today, I saw the uniforms that the Temptations wore on stage, the very shoes that they danced in, and um, I think it's a... Uh, it's pretty incredible to have a facility that uh, these great memories of the past have been enshrined in. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the world owes you a standing ovation for making sure that these things were preserved and are still being preserved. Well, thank you, Mojo. Thank you very much. And I'll see you tomorrow at the museum. All right. I'll, I'll certainly look forward to you uh, seeing you tomorrow. Ms. And thanks a million. And thank you very much for your time. All right. This is WMXD. We've been speaking with Mrs. Esther Edwards, uh, the sister of Barry Gordy, the founder of the Motown Museum, uh, sharing some memories on Mr. David Ruffin. You're listening to the tribute to Mr. David Ruffin and the Temptations. In just a few minutes, we'll be talking with Ms. Gwen Gordy Fuqua. When David Ruffin came from Meridian, Mississippi, uh, the first label he signed with was Anna Records. And we'll be talking with uh, Mr. Kwa in just a few seconds. On 92.3 FM and the continuing tribute to Mr. David Ruffin. 92.3 FM, Electrifying Mojo. And our continuing tribute to Mr. David Ruffin on the line right now. It's Miss Gwen Gordy Fuqua. Who own Anna Records. And at that time, was introduced to Mr. David Ruffin. Hello, Ms. Fuqua. Hello. How are you tonight? Oh, a little sad and, and a little shocked. How are you? I'm doing fine. And about the same situation, I guess uh, the whole city of Detroit right now and perhaps the world is in shock because uh, uh, David Ruffin was definitely... Uh, a very respected entertainer, uh, a 
of course, you saw all of that a long time ago, uh, long before the world saw it, and you were very instrumental in bringing the talents of uh, David Ruffin to the world. Uh, when he was first introduced to you uh, and brought up from Meridian, Mississippi, uh, uh, let's talk about that. I love David very much. Uh, a friend of his named Eddie, I don't remember his last name at this particular time, but he brought David to me. At the time, I had Anna Records. And he said that, hey, I, I brought this boy from Mississippi. He says, but I don't have any place to keep him, and I don't know exactly what to do with him. He says, but I brought him to you. He said, because I heard a lot of nice things about you. He says, I met you a time or two. He says, you probably don't remember me. He says, but, um, you know, I want you to hear him. So he says, but the only thing about it, he says, I don't have a place for him to live. So I said, well, okay, we'll hear him. So, of course, I heard David, and I thought he was really a superstar. And he really was, I mean, he's so energetic. He was young, and he really wanted to be in the entertainment business. And he was seemed like a very nice person. So, of course, over Anna Records, my dad owned a building there on Farnsworth and St. Antoine. We had two two family flats, so so then David, as a lot of the other artists, stayed there, and of course I signed him to management, and um, then we just rehearsed. We did a lot of rehearsing, but he, every rehearsal that he had was just like a performance on the stage, and I thought he was going to be a super talent, which he turned out to be. Okay, and from Anna Records, he went to uh, Motown Records. Yes, he went to my brother Barry, as most of the artists from Anna Records, because Barry and them were on the big move, and uh, they left, came from Anna Records and went to Barry. When David was uh, first introduced to you, and you were basically uh, taking a look at uh, other talent that was also being introduced to you at the time, um, what 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 was it about him just said, okay, well, this one I think we should sign, and how does it feel when you make those type of decisions and you have it turn out to be so overwhelmingly right? When uh, David was first introduced to you, uh, as was a lot of other entertainers, uh, what was it about him that said, yep, that one is going to be one of the big ones? Well, because he was really into it. He wanted to be a superstar. He wanted to be the best. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you people that have a great or a good voice, uh, they just perform and they do. But he always was one of the ones that overdid. You know, in rehearsals, he was just uh, like he wanted to. He would. He wanted to be the. You know, he wanted to be the. He would uh, rehearse everything that you saw him do on stage almost was the way he rehearsed and of course we had uh, we did a little grooming and we did a little a lot of things with him but he had it in him he wanted to be there and he worked very hard and there was never a time that he could rehearse for eight hours if that's what it's called for mm -hmm. you know he was just he was just there and he just was there for you and he wanted to be there and he wanted to be with in front of the pub he loved people he loved people he was just a great personality and a great fellow we're speaking live with miss miss fuqua squin fuqua in california and uh she's in california right now and she uh was nice enough to talk to us on the phone and that we're doing the uh david ruffin uh tribute uh one one last question the steps uh, that David and the Temptations were doing, uh, how did those steps come about? Did he bring that energy to the group? Well, he was energetic. His steps were not especially those steps. Uh, Barry had a thing when he was with the Temptations. Barry had a department, which I headed up, with Harvey Fuqua, Charlie Atkins, and Maxine Powell. I headed up the department. And, of course, they got their choreography from Charlie Atkins. They got a lot of the things from Harvey. And it was just all about everybody that was in that department. Well, th 
thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Fuqua, for uh, spending this time talking to us live uh, in California and on this uh, David uh, Ruffin tribute. And uh, we wish you uh, continued success. And once again, thank you for sharing the microphone with us. All right. Thank you, Mojo. And um, it was nice talking with you on 92.3 FM, right? 92.3 FM. You got it. All the way in California. Here about you out here. <laughs> you so God bless you. And uh, we'll think about David and we'll just pray on that. Well, thank you very much. You're listening to Electrify Mojo Rare Moments. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. If you like this video, Hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button.